and welcome everyone. Every one of us will need to cook something at some point in our lives. Whether we become professional chefs or just cook for the people we live with, we need to know how to use the measurements in recipes. In today's lesson, we will join Tandi and Labukhang as they calculate the amount of ingredients they need to cater for a large event. We'll then focus on how to calculate the cost of the ingredients, namely flour and milk. Let's join Tandi and Labukhang now. So you like this one? Mm. Spaghetti a la mince. Yes. Uh, you said it'd be easy to heat up tonight. Yeah. Okay. Well, it looks like we need spaghetti, mince, onions, and tomatoes. Let's make a list and zoom to the shops. Cool. OK, we need? Hang on. I need to write everything down. Uh, OK. Bala. 500 grams of spaghetti. 500 grams of spaghetti. 240 grams of mince. 300 grams of tomato. And two onions. Two onions. Yeah, that should be enough for you, Nelson, and the little one. This is for four people. I actually invited a bunch of his friends and family, so we'll be 15 people. Well, excuse me? Well, it's fine. Uh, yeah, this is big enough. But we're going to have to work out how to adapt to this for 15 people. Oh, thank you, thank you. At least I'll be useful in some way. Okay, let's see. This is about getting the ratio right. So we'll have to convert the recipe for four people to a recipe of 15 people. Can you suggest how to convert this recipe for four people to make enough food for 15 people? There are different ways to solve this problem. Listen to Lebuchang's suggestion. Yeah, maybe we should multiply everything by four. That's four times four. That is 16. 16, yeah. Oh, but well, it's fine. 15. What do you think of his method? Lebuhang has made an estimate that is easy to work with. He recognizes that when catering, you always need to make sure you have enough food. So instead of working out the exact amount for 15 people, he works out quantities for 16 people. He takes the old recipe and multiplies the quantities by four. So instead of 500 grams of spaghetti, he works out that the new recipe would require four times 500 grams, which equals to 2,000 grams or two kilograms of spaghetti. Can you work out how much of the other ingredients he would need? Well, using Lebuhang's method, I'm sure you can see that you just need to multiply each of the quantities in the original recipe by four. Notice that we calculated the new quantities by multiplying each one by the same amount. In this case, the new amounts are all four times bigger than the original amounts. There is a special relationship between the old recipe and the new one. We call this sort of relationship a ratio. The ratio Lebohang used here can be written as 16 to 4. 16 is the number of people the new recipe will serve, and 4 is the number the old recipe serves. When we write this as a fraction, it is 16 divided by 4. Now, although Lebuhang made a good estimate, Tandi wants to know exactly how much she needs if she only wants enough food for 15 people. Our ratio is not 16 to 4, it's 15 to 4. Okay, let's just start over. Okay, I write my ratio as the number of people I want to serve versus the original number, so that would be... Yeah, like it's that. fine, I get it. You've said it a million times. And yeah, 15 to 4. Actually, why don't you go on with your math and let me do what I'm good at, and that is cooking. Because it's a good exercise in math literacy for you, Lebuchan. Here we go again. Look, it's easy, man. I've written the ratio as a fraction. Okay. Let me just put on my glasses so I can see what I'm doing. So that's 15 
divide by 4 gives us 3.75. Now, I can calculate my new ingredients by multiplying the original recipe with my ratio. Uh, how do you know what number to put on top when you write the ratio as a fraction? Well, ratio is a relationship between two quantities, one known, the other unknown. So 15 represents the new ingredients, which is unknown, and that goes on top. And the 4 represents the original recipe, which is a known, that goes at the bottom. Neat, eh? Mm, yeah, cool. <laughs> yeah, but let's get back to the recipe. I want it to convert the means. Let me work that out. Right. I'll show you. Okay. Now we have 500 grams spaghetti times the 3.75 is... 1.875. Okay, and then we have mince, which is 240 grams times 3.75 is equal to... 900 grams. Mm -hmm. Then tomato... 300 grams times 3.75 equals 1.125. Okay, finally, the onions. Huh? But here it only says 2 times the fraction 7.5. What do you think the 7,5 means? Should Lebuhang use 7 or 8 onions? Can you see the problem with the original recipe? The problem in this recipe is that all the ingredients except onions were given as masses. You can work out exact ratios of quantities using masses. If you had a mass of onions, you could chop them up and weigh them too. Watch and see how a professional chef solves this problem. When you're cooking, you need to know important skills such as measuring. We found out how to use a kitchen scale from Lulama Plakis, head chef at this branch of Bitzeng Caterers. My recipe calls for a quarter kilo. That's about 250 grams. So I'll show you how we measure the onions. Um, you must first check that your scale has a decimal, and then it's zero at the moment. Then you put one onion on. It's about 85 grams. Another onion. It's 210 grams, it's still not 250. Then we add another onion. It's about 305 grams, so that's a bit too much. We'll reduce that and add a smaller onion to see. Now the onion is 250 grams, which is exactly a quarter kilogram. It looks like Tandi and Labhang will be cooking all afternoon. Now let's look at how to calculate the cost of the ingredients used in a muffin recipe. The recipe will make 12 muffins and uses flour, eggs, milk and sugar. For this exercise, we will focus on the price of the flour. Flour is sold in three different masses, 500 grams, 2,5 kilograms and 5 kilograms. 500 grams costs 8 rand 49, 2,5 kilograms costs 21 rand 99 and 5 kilograms costs 42 rand 99. It's obvious that the 500 gram bag costs the least, but which bag works out to be the cheapest way to buy flour? We must calculate this by determining the price per kilogram. Let's do this together. The first step is to change all the measurements to be in the same unit. Let's convert the kilograms to grams. There are 1000 grams in a kilogram. To change 2,5 kilograms to grams, we multiply 2,5 by 1000. This means that 2,5 kilograms is equal to 2,500 grams. Let's use the same method to change 5 kilograms to grams. To do this, we multiply 5 by 1,000 and get 5 kilograms is equal to 5,000 grams. Now that all the masses are in grams, let's do the price comparison. To do this, we must divide the price by the mass. This will give us a price per gram. Let's start with the smallest bag first. 8 rand 49 divided by 500 grams equals 
0.010698 rand per gram. This means that the flour in the 500 gram bag costs roughly 1.5 cents per gram. Now let's look at the 2.5 kilogram bag. 21 rand 99 divided by 2,500 grams is equal to 0 0.08796 rand per gram. The flour in this bag costs just under 1 cent per gram. This means that the cost of the flour in the 2,5 kilogram bag is cheaper than the flour in the 500 gram bag. Now let's calculate the price of the 5 kilogram bag. 42 rand 99 divided by 5,000 grams is 0 0.008598 rand per gram. The flour in the 5 kilogram bag is also just under 1 cent per gram. Let's look at all our answers together so that we can compare them in more detail. From the calculations, we can see that the 5 kilogram bag is the best value for money at 0 0.008598 rands per gram. Flour can be kept for quite a while before it goes off. So it's a good idea to buy the 5 kilogram bag. Thank you for joining us. Remember that the tasks for this section can be found in the Working with Conversions and Time Task video. You'll also be able to learn more about measurement on our website www.mindset.co.za forward slash learn. Goodbye.